It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this video, we're gonna continue down the Unity Learn path of Create with Code Player Control. In the previous videos, we covered 1.1 and 1.2. We are now up to 1.3, high speed chase. So let's go ahead and click on that. Overview, keep your eyes on the road. In this lesson, you will code a new c -sharp script for your camera, which will allow it to follow the vehicle down the road and give the player a proper view of the scene. In order to do this, you will have to use a very important concept in programming variables. So again, let's watch the introduction. We've successfully programmed the vehicle to drive down the road, colliding with obstacles as it goes. But the poor player is left behind, missing all the action. So by the end of this lesson, the camera will follow the vehicle down the road, giving the player a front row seat to the wreckage. In order to keep the camera behind the vehicle, we have to understand a fundamental new programming concept, variables. A variable is just a piece of information that can vary or change. And variables are critical for what we're trying to do here. Since the vehicle's position will always be changing or varying, we need a variable to track that position. You couldn't set the camera's position to a fixed number like 5, 10, or 100. It wouldn't be able to move with the car. So we'll make a new variable for the vehicle's position set the camera's position based on that variable and just like that your camera will be able to stay right on your vehicle's tail to make all that happen i'll see you in unity all right we're gonna mark step as complete again make sure you watch the video add a speed variable for your vehicle we need an easier way to change the vehicle speed and allow it to be accessed from the inspector. In order to do so, what we need is something called a variable. So again, you wanna make sure you watch this video. Here are the steps. In the player controller, add a public float speed equals to 5.0 F at the top of the class. So that is over here. Scroll to the top, right after this first bracket, which starts your class, I'm just gonna do a comment, call it variables, public float speed equals to 5.0 F. Speed is equal to 5.0 F. Speed of the car. Replace the speed value and then translate method with the speed variable, then test. Save the script, then edit the speed value in the inspector to get the speed you want. So again, over here, and you can see that down here, it's saying get rid of the 20 and put in your speed variable. So up here, remember I told you at a speed of 20, no, now it's at the speed, which is the speed variable above. So now this is going to be speed. So again, we're gonna save it and press play. You can see now it's super small, it's slow. It's like slowly pushing the stuff. But what I can do, click on this, I can change it to five. Now that I made a variable here, because I made it public, I can see it in Unity, it's five. I can actually change it here back to 20 and press play and you'll see it goes a lot faster. So you can see it's back to 20. Just to show you that, let's make it 100 and watch how fast it goes. Press enter and press play. You're like flying. But I'm gonna change it back to 20. All right, that's that step. Mark step as complete. Creating a script for the camera. The camera is currently stuck in one position. If we want it to follow the player, we have to make a new script for the camera. 
create a new C-sharp script, call it follow player and attach it to the camera. So over here, I'm gonna right click on scripts, create C-sharp script, follow the player. And I can drag it to the camera or I can simply click on main camera, click on add and type that script. It will add it like that. Add public game object player to the top of the script. So you can see inside of that, we need to open up this script. So let's just double click on it, the very top, public game object player. Make sure that's right, yep. Select the main camera, then drag the player object into the empty player variable in the inspector. So first thing you have to do, now that I made this public game object, I need to save this. Now when I come back over here, you can see right here, follow the player. It will take the unity a second to load, but now this public object player shows up. Now it wants us to actually drag the player, so it wants us to drag this vehicle. You can see that here. Select the main camera, then drag the player object onto the empty player variable in the inspector. See, this is empty. I'm gonna simply click on the vehicle and drag it into here. In update, assign the camera's position to the player's position, then test. So you're gonna say transform.position, so you're saying the camera's position is equal to the player's position. So player.transform.position. So why is transform.position? So if you look at this, Transform is here, dot position is X, Y, and Z. So really what you're saying is this transform dot position, which is the X, the Y, and the Z is equal to the vehicle's transform dot position, which is X, Y, and Z. So let's do that over here. So we're saying transform dot position is equal to player dot transform dot position. And for my comment is my position of the camera is equal to the player, which is the vehicle position, which is X, Y, and Z. My position, the camera's X, Y, and Z is equal to that. That's what this line of code is saying. So let's save that. And you can see that's right here. Go ahead and press mark step as complete. Let's actually run this to see. And you can see it's at the actual position. So it's kind of slower. We need to raise it up, but let's see what they have in it. Add an offset to the camera position. We need to move the camera position above the vehicle so that the player can have a decent view of the game. In the line, in the line in the update method, add a new vector, zero, five, negative seven, then test. So we're saying get the player's position and add zero x, five y, so you're moving up plus negative seven back. So again, like if I'm here, I'm saying zero x, stay exactly the width. And again, let's just focus in on this. X is red. I don't want it to move this way. So zero X, Y I'm moving up five. So I will be up here somewhere. And Z negative seven, I'm moving back here. So that way I'll have a better position than this. Because when you look at this, this is what you're seeing if you stay there. But if I move up and back, it won't change. So we're gonna add this plus vector three, zero, five, negative seven. So I'm gonna do plus new vector three, zero X, five Y, and negative seven Z. And I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna mark that as complete. Let's see what it looks like now. You can see that's, and I'm probably gonna do, I'm gonna change it a little bit. Let's see what negative five looks like. So I can be a little bit closer in the truck. I'm gonna save it. And let's press play. Yeah, I like it like that. I probably want it 
up a little bit more. Uh, I'll move it. I can see the the back of it. I think I'll leave it like that. Now let's try six. Let's try six. I don't like seven. Seven's too far back. Save. Actually, I can kind of guess this. So if I do 5.4 is where I'm at, and negative six. That's zero, 5.5. That's going to show me that. Save. So what I'm doing is I'm using the camera here and changing these positions up here to see how I want it. This is how the camera is right now. So again, if it was at zero and zero, that's why I was seeing that. What I'm saying is go up 5.5. So now I'm seeing this and go back negative six. So this is really what the camera will see. So let's go ahead and press play. I have an error. I can't say 5.5, I have to do whole numbers. So let's do file save again and let's press play. So there you go. The speed probably needs to be a lot faster. I click on my vehicle. I did it 20, let's say 50. Let's try that. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> All right, mark that step as complete. Make the offset into the view. Make the offset into a ve vector. Make the offset into a vector three variable. We we'll fixed the camera position, but we may not want to change it later. We need to make it easier to access the offset. Add the following to the follow player. At the at the top of the follow player script, declare private vector offset. So over here, again, these are my variables. I'll do a comment variables. I'm going to say private. Come back. Vector three offset. Vector three offset. Copy the new vector three code and assign it to that variable. So we want to grab this. And we're going to put that up here equals to. I'll just put a comment here. Move the camera up 5y and back 6z. Now, because I got rid of that, I need to do plus offset, which is going to take this value and put it back here. Replace the original code with the offset variable, test and save. So again, I'm going to come here, file save, come back over to Unity, and then press play. And you can see it is working. Go ahead and mark the step as complete. Edit the play mode tint color. If we're going to be creating and editing variables, we need to make sure we don't accidentally try to change to make changes when in play mode. From the top menu, go to edit preferences or in Unity, edit preferences or Unity preferences. So over here, Unity preferences. In the left menu, choose colors, then edit the play mode tint. Colors, you can see play mode tint. So edit the play mode tint color to have a slight color. So let's, uh, let's find a color that we're not using. So like that. Play your project and test it, then close your preferences. So, so you can see what happens. My play mode is, that lets me know that when I do this, it tints everything. Go ahead and close that. Close your preferences. Let's mark this as complete. Lesson recap.
So our game is in a pretty good place now. We have our camera that follows behind the player as it's offset. So that's some cool functionality that we've added. We've also gained a lot more programming knowledge. In our follow player script, we learned how to use our first public variable, in this case, so that we can actually attach a reference to our player in Unity. We learned that variables also don't have to just be numbers. They can be game objects, or they can be vector threes. They can be of whatever type they want, as long as you make sure that you assign the same thing to the type of variable that you have. So we have a vector three offset, and we assigned it to a vector three. We learned about the difference between access modifiers, like the public and the private keyword, so that we're able to interact with and use these variables in different ways inside and outside of our script. We also learned how to initialize our variables. Now, in the next lesson, we'll add our last lines of code so that we can really control this player as they drive down the road and help turn around all these different obstacles so we don't just keep pushing them all the way down. See you in the next lesson. Let's go ahead and press mark complete. So we've completed 1.3, and in the next lesson we will finish up 1.4.